Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to this replay cast between Kron Aberrant and Nagel on K4 Shrine. This is a map that has been around for a while, but finally looks the way I wanted it to, or almost. It's The fog is going to be a bit lower ultimately, but it, this is basically how I want it to look, with the fog. Because it's supposed to be in a giant high mountaintop, and this, well, high mountaintop anyway. High mountaintop grotto built by crazy mathematicians obsessed with graph theory. Anyhow, Nagel is going for Vekir, and Kron Aberrant is going for Grekim. Kron Aberrant building up his start, and Nagel as well. Nagel has got a start set up, however. Kron Aberrant is still placing all of his RPs, getting everything set up the way he wants it to. Nagel sending out a Shinvir towards the south, and a Tethvir towards the west. The Shinvir will find Kron Aberrant. And Kron Aberrant, let's see, from his point of view, this is at the 26 second mark. He has built his Octos, they are just growing up, maturing getting ready for a long and fruitful life as a resource processor. While Nagel's scouting forces still approach. So Nagel has jumped back a bit. He's just double checking his start. He did mess up one of the RP placements a bit. Looks like he is gonna be fixing that up. And Crown Aberrant doing more interesting stuff. Now he is moving his triad immediately towards this expansion. Wow, that's, that's very surprising actually. So he's immediately moving towards the south central expansion right next to his main base, not going for the QP, barely defending his main base, just walking his triad away, and right in between setting up the triad. Ooh, nice idea. So make sure that it's hard for Nagel to scout out where his triad would even be, because you'd expect it to be next to one of the expansions. So very nice idea on Crown Aberrant's part, while Nagel, his Shinveer, is just about to hit, and we see on the timeline that it has hit, so players are aware that stuff has happened, but I don't know if Nagel has actually checked that. Let's see. No, this is... Oh, this is damage against Nagel. Sorry, Crown Aberrant is... Ah, here we are. So, the Shin Viewer came in before and must have taken damage. Well, now Crown Aberrant is sending in an Octo to defend against this. Get rid of the Shin Viewer. Which... Let me think. Octo versus Shin Viewer. Who would win? Octo, probably. Shin Viewer does have the range advantage, but this Shin Viewer was walking a bit, so the Octo had some time to get into range. So Crown Aberrant sending an Octo to patrol, and now he's sending his Triad into the base, which is probably actually a bad idea. I think he had the right idea before where he had his Triad in between. It's hard to scout out, it's hard, you don't expect it to be there, and it could be anywhere in that case. Nagel, however, having the information he needs, has decided to keep his Shinveer towards the midpoint between his base and Crown Aberrant's, probably to build a mid-ground depot. Speaking of depots, he is building a foundation in his main base, which will probably be used to build the depot very soon. Ah, here we go, there's the depot right now. While he has a Zionveer going towards the Central North expansion to start building more RP. So both players going towards their Central expansions on their sides. I'm a bit surprised, not totally, since the expansions in the back, I should probably mention this is slightly modified from the last time it was seen. The main has been largely unmodified, but the expansion, the safe expansion towards the back on the North, East, South, and West has been reduced, as you can see, to two LC crates and one QP crate. The central expansion has been reduced slightly. I believe I dropped a couple crates from each one, but it's not a huge change. And the central expansions right here, the very middle of the central LC, has been completely unchanged, though it's also rarely used. I have seen an AI use it when I was playing against it once to sort of test the map, and that was surprising. But I've never really seen a human player use it much. I can't recall any instances where it happened offhand. Anyhow, Crown Aberrant is building up more Faro's Ancepes at this expansion down here. Double checking, this is at the 338 mark, right next to the present actually. Both players are focusing a lot on the present, they're focusing on their macro, they are not focusing very much on time manipulation right now. They're just focusing on getting themselves set up, and Crown Aberrant is focusing on spreading himself out as much as possible, just trying to be as much of a parasite as he can. Just feeding off the map and expanding, I suppose a virus is a better term. Trying to be as much of a virus as he can, just expanding without a bound. And I he probably will be able to do that quite just fine, Grekman is very good at this. But Nagel, let's see, Nagel is... I'm a bit surprised he's just had this guy here. I I expect he'll be building Midground Depot, but he must be more focused on getting... I mean, he has the money for it, and... Okay, there's a Calm Hub in the center of the map, and here we go, there's the foundation that I was looking for. So Calm Hub, just to make sure you can see everything going around, and the Proxy Depot right next to Crown Aberrant's main, which, as we've established, is his least important base right now, because he is not actually... Fo he's focused on it for economy, he has a lot... He has eight LCRPs there, but other than that... However, a Zion Pulsar is going towards the main base, and will be dealing quite a bit of damage to it. Attacking the main Octo, which is... For stopping expansions, stopping the RPs from being built is a bad idea, but for stopping any further technology development is a great idea. Interesting. 
Interestingly enough, Crown Iron hasn't gone for a reef yet, though we are looking ahead of where Crown Iron has been manipulating. Nagel is getting housing class, jumping back about two minutes to where Crown Iron is in the 346 mark. He is getting himself prepped up, putting a Faro and a Seppi in place, a couple Faro's and Seppi in place to deal with the Zion Pulsar before it gets there. Though one of those Faro's is actually, sorry, one of those Seppi's is going towards the West Central expansion, but the rest of his forces are remaining in his main base to deal with the Zion Pulsar when it comes along, which will be very soon. As you can see, this, the damage being dealt is about 15 seconds up from where we are right now, and a reef is being built in this base for healing and tech. See, jumping towards the future, two minutes into the future from there, we see that the proxy depot has been built, the design pulser, so Nagel thinks he has won, but he has also scouted out, more importantly, he scouted out the southwest base that Crown Armor has taken, so Nagel thinks he's won, he hasn't yet, but it's still good to know he will have dealt a lot of damage if Crown Armor hasn't dealt with it in the past. Jumping back to where Crown Armor is at the 450 mark, we see that he has dealt with the design pulser, he is getting rid of it, and it... Okay, so the Zion Pulsar will not be able to destroy this base, but the southwest base has not been similarly defended, so it will be going down unless Crown Amber does something about that. Nagel jumping back to the 414 mark to double check this attack is Zion Pulsar. We can barely see, but it is going through the fog. And coming up through here, going actually to the west expansion. So, double checking all the expansions, really good idea. He's sending a Zion Pulsar, Zion Beer, so I say. Sending his Zionbeer over to the Northwest Expansion to expand there, get himself more RPs. And it has taken the North Central Expansion a bit, but has not committed to it. And of course the Zion Pulse are going towards the Southwest, we see right now. And Octo's being built to help defending and assist Crown Amaranth, however, is sending them mostly for RPs, which will be their doom, unfortunately. Especially since that can be used very effectively for defense, but I think Crown Amaranth is going to just abort the RP orders when he gets the chance. We'll see right now. Looks like... No, he's not changing that at all. We do see the West Expansion is being damaged. We see the Southwest Expansion. Two of the Octos... No, actually, all the Octos have had their orders cancelled. Two of them are remaining to build RPs, but the rest of them are going to be able to get rid of the Zion Pulsar quite effectively. And then the base can be taken without any real concern. At the same time, Faros are being sent over to Nagel's main base in the Northwest. Sorry, Northeast. While Crown Armor is pausing for some reason, he doesn't have Crown reporting or anything, I'm not sure what he's pausing for. Nagel, on the other hand, at the 5.23 mark, he has not changed up his attacks at all, and he is, he does see him losing, he does himself losing two design pulsers, not the one towards the west though. Actually, I'm trying to think of it, the one towards the west is the one towards the south. So one of his Zion pulsers is down, the other Zion pulser is fine, and he is building an ACC and a foundation in his main base. Foundation likely for healing against the Faros coming in, the ACC of course, for air units, the aerial control center, it does that very well. And you can see that he's starting to lose his grace and navies are starting to be exhausted. Zion Torcher being built up will be able to take care of a couple of the Faros, but it looks like they will ultimately take it down. Jumping back into the depot to be healed up, so the Zion Torcher should be fine actually with the depot healing it. Faros will be deflected. Cronamer's attack has been pushed back. Cronamer, on the other hand, about 30 seconds down from here. No, 15 seconds down from here. He is. He sees the attack going, not much changing, and an annex is being built next to the mid-ground depot, I should point out. So Nagel at the 744 mark has not built any vehicles from here yet, but he does have an annex here so he can build vehicles whenever he wants, he doesn't need infantry near there. And it looks like he's building an aerial control center near there too, so he has essentially two full bases at this point. One as main and one at this midpoint between himself and Crown Aberrant. Although Crown Aberrant's major base is in the south central expansion. Zion Pulsar at the west base, going towards the southwest base, but it is well defended enough that it won't be a big deal. Crown Aberrant... Oh, this is not the right player. Crown Aberrant, however, is not appearing to be too concerned about it. He has defenses plenty. He, the Octopod is enough on its own, and everything else is just icing on the cake, so he's going to be fine. That won't be a concern. What is a concern, however, is whether Nagel will be able to fend off these Faros. They are still damaging RPs that are actually harvesting. They managed to get past where the Zion Torcher was, and Nagel has not dealt with this yet. He is, however, 30 seconds down from Crown and he is starting to attack the Faros. I don't know if he's going to be moving the Zion... He is moving the Zion Torcher forward. I do know. Never mind. There's the little order bar here. So he is moving the Zion Torcher forward. Will be able to take care of the Faros. However, the Faros, surprisingly enough, are not attacking back. Faros ha are detectors. They can see the Zion Torcher even if it is cloaked. So it's not that they're getting confused by it. And here's that Zion Pulsar attack that I mentioned before, Crown Aberrant. However, not too worried about that. He is... More concerned about making sure that this works here. The oh, Shin Church is coming out for Nagel. Shin Church is going towards the south base from the looks of it. I'm not 100% sure. We also see the Shin Beer and Teth Beer from the south going towards the main to defend. Help defend. While well, Shin Churches are attacking the south base, 
fending off against some Sephi's Faros and Octopods. Once the Sephi's down, though, it should be in good shape. The Faros are the only real threat from here. Octopods, decently powerful, but not great anti-air units. However, given enough time, which they are, they can destroy the Shinturchers, which is unfortunate because Shinturchers are very powerful units, and you do not want to waste them. They're my favorite unit, by the way. Mostly aesthetically, but they're still my favorite unit. And he's making them go to waste, no! Well, okay, it's the Sephi. I mean, everything else, you can kind of assume it would work, but... Yeah, there's a lot of forces here. Nagel will need to bring a much larger army in if he wants to actually deal any real damage. I'm surprised he has a Zion Churcher here that hasn't actually been doing much of anything. Okay, it helped defend, never mind. So, the Zion Churcher helped, did, did help defend against the Faros. And now the Shinturchers have decided to instead go towards the main base. Not a bad idea since the Triad was being rebuilt in the main base by Kron Aberrant, but it does still mean that Kron Aberrant has two bases that are being completely unmolested that are harvesting quite nicely. And a third base... No, never mind, just patrolling around to make sure that he knows what's going on, make sure there's no bases being taken by Nagel towards the west. And he is getting advanced structures, so Kron Aberrant will be able to get air units quite shortly. And first Halcyon class, you know, Teth Halcyon being built for Nagel while he sends Shin Churches over to the southwest base. Not a terrible idea, there aren't any Seppis defending, but there's still a lot of units. Is that how that works out? Same time, Kron Aberrant is getting the west central expansion completely cleaned out, and Shin Churches coming in. They're able to kill some of the Faros. The Faros are not in a good position to help deal with this, but Kron Aberrant is two minutes down from where Nagel is right now, where we're looking, so he will be able to fiddle around with this and make it work out to his best. As you can see, the Octopods actually... Apparently I'm underestimating them as anti-air units. They aren't terrible as anti-air units. They're passable. Jumping back about a minute and a half where Kron Aberrant is focused, he is not moving anything into position. He, doesn't, he has the Faros being built up, but he is not moving them into any better position than they are now. Let's see. The main base has Sepis being built up, but they aren't being built up in time. They are getting completely destroyed while growing up, killing child Sepis. That's that's just sad, man, Nagel. Really, they, they didn't even have a chance. But he is killing them. Did get rid of all of them. Bit of a tragedy, but there go those Seppies. Never had a chance to live. However, the base here is perfectly fine, so Crown Armor is still in a good spot right now. Nagel, like I said, has not used his proxy depot. Much to my surprise, and actually, it doesn't matter. We're gonna have to jump back to when Crown Armor was playing around with this. No, Nagel will actually take care of this for me, because Crown Armor has swung around and dealt damage at the 11.3 mark, at the 10.10 mark. Let's check when this attack would have started from. So these units are the ones that are sent in to attack this base over to the east. Two Jin Churchers coming in and the 10,000 we saw before. While this is the attack we saw towards the west, destroying the expansion that was being built up. And first of all, getting rid of the Zion Vera. We didn't even see that. And secondly, getting rid of the RPs. Shin Churchers going towards this base over to the southwest, but now the Faros are in a slightly better position to deal with them, and we saw before they were defended against. But the main base is being destroyed, the Shin Churchers have taken care of it, and here we go, here's the attack that I was looking for, with the Octos, Octopus, and Seppis coming in to destroy Nagel's base, getting rid of everything he's worked at. Well, the proxy base, anyway. He didn't, he didn't use used that. I'm quite surprised he never really used the proxy base. But, there it goes. So, his... Teth Halcyon coming in to deal with the Faros, but won't really be able to do much there. Not terrible anti-ground units, but Faros are better. And with the Octopod support, there's no way that Teth Halcyon will be able to get out alive. And indeed, it does not. Right now, also, other fence is being upgraded by Nagel. While Kron Aberrant... Uh, see, just... Well, we're looking at Kron Aberrant before. Nagel, double-checking towards the future, I want to see what he had planned. So he has Design Halcyon and Teth Halcyon. So that's what he was planning on doing, but he doesn't actually have that. If we jump back to Kronamer's point of view, well, we do see the Zion Halcyon and Teth Halcyon, but they aren't in as good of a position as they were before. So this is more final, so we'll look at this. Zion Halcyon is coming in and taking care of quite a lot of what's going on, actually. Doing a very good job of dealing with the Octos and not quite a good of a job dealing with the Octopods. But the Octos still gotten rid of them. Getting rid of the Faros, except he's really focusing a lot on the base class units, not focusing a lot on the Octopods, but that does reduce the amount of damage being dealt by that army. And let's see, Kron Aberrant. Kron Aberrant is sending a bunch of forces in to defend the main base, although, unfortunately, three of them were, are Octos, which are completely useless in this case. But I think Kron Aberrant probably didn't actually mean to send them in to defend so much as to rebuild. Probably sending in them as a tribe, though his main base is pretty much completely exhausted. The QP crates, not so exhausted, but everything else pretty much is. Zion Halcyon's coming down from Nagel towards... Actually, Nagel has jumped back two minutes. Should point this out. 
So Nagel jumped back a couple minutes to deal with the battle that had gone on and also deal with his northwest expansion being attacked by an Octobot and a Faro, but he hasn't actually dealt with it yet. Shinturcher here not really doing too much, and we saw this before the Halcyon class doing quite well. This Zion Halcyon here going back to repair itself with another Zion Halcyon should be coming in for backup pretty soon. Actually, they're all retreating, so the Zion Halcyons have retreated, but massively destroyed. They, they decimated Chronomer's forces. More than decimated, really. The opposite of decimated. They left a tenth. Regardless, these Octopods are still fairly powerful, and that won't be enough because Halcyon class units are just more powerful than Octopods. I mean, Octopods are tier 2 units, Halcyon class tier 3 units, so it's. It, you can see it. It would make sense. I mean, both anti ground units, but one of them is just better because it's higher attack level, more expensive, but better dealing with large armies and definitely better at getting rid of just dedicated anti ground like this as it is dedica dedicated anti ground on its own. Still, Octopods. Not a bad unit for their cost. So the Octopod's coming in and, like I said, being destroyed by... The, now Shinshirt is coming in as well to deal with them, so Crown Amber's forces over here have been destroyed. But to the northwest, his forces are still going strong, dealing with quite a bit of damage. And Crown Amber, from his point of view, seeing what he's doing right now, he is actually sending a fairly large army from a southwest base, building even more units as well. By sending a large army from a southwest base, building up more RPs, and the units going straight towards the main base, running into this... Shin Turcher, which actually, come to think of it, is not a bad spot because it will be able to scout at the center. Has been able to scout at the center since now Nagel knows what's going on. However, Nagel did lose his northwest base. He is getting attacked on all sides. There's a massive attack coming in. I don't know how he's going to be able to deal with this. He does have a couple housing class units, but from his point of view, they're out of position. They're going to, for essentially a, a preemptive counterattack, but that will not be enough, unfortunately, for him. The majority of the army is coming in from the southwest base and going towards the north of the central grotto. So, I guess that's a grotto. Central shrine? Anyway, the central pyramid structure. And that will be that will be enough to take care of the base on its own. I mean, let alone everything else will be going on. And Cronhammer has chrono boarding too, so on top of that. Really, Cronhammer is going to have a really hard time losing from this position. Nagel is going to have to work work as hard as he can to get out of this. He does have a lot of resources, though, so he can... Oh. Yeah, like I said, chronoporting. As you can see, Chronoporting has actually done a bit of chronoporting already. A lot of his units already in the main pace. Tailing it will we'll be dealing damage towards the lower end of the timeline. Once the blue time wave comes along here, we will see that damage be fully realized. However, as we can see, some of the autos did go through, but not all of them, so the autos are... Three Octos have Chronoported back, dealing with damage they can, and we will see what goes on, but mo that's the only Chronoports that have gone through at this point. So Chrono, like I said, is ahead of Nagel right now. Nagel is actually dealing quite a bit of damage to this central south base, but it's too little too late. Nagel really needs to defend. If his, Unfortunately, these guys do not have any teleportation. If they had skip teleport, that would be great, but they don't. Which is really unfortunate, because if they did, that would mean... Essentially, that would mean that Nagel could just jump back and tear everything apart before it can even deal any damage, because he still has time on the playable timeline. Let's double check, go to Chronomer's point of view, 30 seconds from now. Chronomer's point of view. It's still on the playable timeline, so you can still have units from here jump back to the base, destroy the Octos before they jump back in time, and then eliminate that entire Chronoport. But at this point, that's not happening. And yet, Nagel has... Wait, Nagel is actually defending, I think. And... That didn't make sense. Carnivore told me this replay made sense. Well, it was entertaining nonsense anyway. So I hope you enjoyed that. Slightly bizarre ending though it was. Still interesting game. And thank you for watching.